Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. The purpose of today's meeting is to go over our system improvement efforts for school year 2022 and 2023. And to be able to plan for system improvement efforts for next year, we have to reflect on how things were accomplished this year and also get thoughts from our stakeholders about things that we can do to improve for parent involvement. So we're going to go through several things this morning. We're going to start with a review of federal programs, and then we'll look at our summative data from this school year. And then finally, we'll end looking at our system strategic plan for next year. So I've shared my screen with you, and we're going to be doing two sessions. We're going to be doing one at 9 o'clock this morning and one at 3 p.m. this afternoon. The purpose of this meeting is to share information about services offered by federal programs in our district. Also to invite stakeholder feedback on the district's consolidated LEA improvement plan and the district parent and family engagement policy. And finally, to provide resources that are available to parents to support the students' academic achievement. Is the Consolidated LEA Improvement Plan. And LEA is just a word that we use to describe the system. So another word for that is the Mercy City Schools or the LEA. Get back to this. Looking at the federal programs that are offered in Commerce City Schools, you have the first one is Title I Part A and it's programs for disadvantaged children. And then we have Title I Part C, education of migratory children. We have Title I Part D, programs for neglected and delinquent children. And we have Title II Part A, which is focused on teacher quality. We also have Title III Part A, language instruction for limited English proficient and immigrant students. And we have Title IV Part A for student support and academic enrichment. And then we have Title X Part C, McKinney-Vento Act. Then we have Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or IDEA. And then the final federal program that we oversee for commerce is the Perkins Career Technical and Agricultural Education. Let's start with the first one. And the first one is Title I Part A. And this is to increase the academic achievement of all students, particularly low income students, and to ensure that all children have the opportunity to obtain a high quality education and reach proficiency on challenging state academic standards and assessments. To assist teachers in understanding the needs and concerns of students and parents, and then finally, to help parents understand their child and be more involved in their child's education. The way our system uses Title I funds during the 22-23 school year, we will purchase instructional resources, which will include supplemental texts, computer-based programs, technology, and teaching materials. We will also use those funds for extended learning time, for after-school tutoring, and summer programs. We will use the funds for parental and family engagement, academic materials for parents through parent workshops, and books to read at home with children. And finally, for human resources, we use our Title I funds to contract with retired teachers who can come in and just focus on reading and math instruction with our struggling learners. Title II use of funds is for recruitment and retention of teachers. We also use those funds for professional development activities, learning communities, job embedded professional learning, online professional learning courses, and teacher and leader development. 
Those funds can be used for professional development stipends to pay our teachers for their time beyond contracted time, and also for professional learning specialists to come in and work with our teachers. Level three is language instruction for limited English proficient and immigrant students. This is a supplemental, supplemental federal grant for English learners that provides funding above and beyond the state and district funds and services that are already in place. So the purpose of this program is to ensure that English learners, including immigrant children and youth, attain English proficiency and meet the same academic content and achievement standards that all other students are expected to meet. The English learner federal definition, students for whom there is a report of a primary home language other than English on the home language survey and who on the basis of the state approved screening assessment have been determined to lack the state defined English language, language skills in listening, speaking, reading and writing necessary to succeed in the school's regular instructional program. For use of funds, our system uses Title III funds for instructional resources, such as supplemental texts, dictionaries, computer-based programs, technology, and teaching materials. We also use these funds for professional development, professional learning for ESOL teachers, and general education teachers, professional learning resources. And finally, these funds are used for family engagement and outreach, literacy classes, and workshops. For Part A, student support and academic enrichment. The purpose of this grant is to provide all students with access to a well-rounded education. Also to improve school conditions for student learning, to improve the use of technology in order to improve the academic achievement and digital literacy of all students. Then we have the McKinney-Vento Act. The purpose of the McKinney-Vento Act for homeless students is to ensure equal access to the same free appropriate public education, including a preschool education as other children and youth also to provide the opportunity to meet the same challenging state academic content standards and to address barriers to enrolling, attending, and succeeding in school. Next, we have Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. The use of funds includes, but it's not limited to, providing services and supports for students with disabilities, specially designed instruction, occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, and evaluations and re-evaluations. Finally, we have the Perkins Funds, which is the Career, Technical, and Agricultural Educational Program, CTAE, is the acronym for that area. Use of funds Perkins funds for classroom supplies, for classroom technology, equipment, competency, CTSO, for our career and technical student organizational competitions, and our CTSO field trips. Then we get to parent and family engagement. This is something that's truly important to all programs, but it is a component of the Title I program. So family engagement in Commerce City is an ongoing process to promote active involvement, communication, and collaboration between families, schools, school districts, community leaders, and other stakeholders with the goal of educating the children to ensure student achievement and success. The district parent and family engagement policy focuses on building the capacity of parents and family members. We develop materials and trainings, which include workshops, videos, social media, newsletters, and flyers to provide information about state adoption, as well as the required assessments for Georgia students, including alternative forms of assessments. 
school personnel, administrators, teachers, parent liaison, office personnel, paraprofessionals, and other staff. Monthly meetings during the school year to discuss strategies to increase parent and finally, our stakeholders complete an annual about parent and family engagement survey. Our federal programs contacts within the systems. If you have questions concerning Title III migrant or assessment, that contact person is Linda Murray. Her email is found here and our office number is here. Director of Federal Programs, that would be me, Joy Talbert. This is my email and this is my contact information. Elaine Gunter is our Director of Special Education. You see Elaine's email address and our office number. And then finally, we have Alicia Vargas and Alicia is our Parent and Family Engagement Coordinator. This is her email and you can also contact her at our We would just like to thank you, thank our parents, thank all of our stakeholders for their participation in support of students served in the Commerce City School District. Now, this particular presentation will be posted on our website, and we will also post a text box where we would like to get our stakeholders' thoughts about things that we can do to improve your involvement in our school system. Please let us know any information that you would like to receive from the schools, whether it's additional information on the excellence that are taught in the classrooms or it's additional information on assessments that we administer to students throughout the year, or maybe it's just on ways that you can get involved. Please let us know that by completing the text box that will be attached with this presentation. We have a presentation, and then I want to share with you our summative data from 2122, just so you're aware of how our students did. So this particular presentation will include all of the summative test data which will be our end of grade data for third grade through eighth grade and our end of course data for our high school students in ninth through 12th. First of all, let's start with our third graders and we'll start with English language arts and you'll see two graphs. In the first graph, these are the overall number of students. So for example, you have four levels in the way the tests are scored. Level one, level two, level three, level four. Level one is known as the developing level. Level two is known, I'm sorry, level one is known as beginning level. Level two is known as developing. Level three is proficient and level four is distinguished. So our goal as a system is to get our students to the proficient level and even better if we can push them beyond the grade level to that distinguished level. The second chart, these are the overall percentages. So for example, this, this first chart tells you that we had 26 students so 26 actual students scored at the beginning level in third grade in English language arts. Second chart tells you that those 26 students actually represent 20% of the students who were assessed. Or this shows you that 45 students scored at developing and those 45 students represent 34% of the population tested in third grade. We had 40 students who scored at proficient level, which is on grade level. Those 40 students represent 31% of the students who were tested. And we had 20 students who scored at distinguished in those 20 students who represent 15% of the students who were tested. When you move on to third grade, we're still in third grade and we're going to look at third grade math. 
So for math, we had nine students overall in third grade who scored at the level one beginning level. We had 57 students who scored at level two developing level. We had 50 students who scored at the proficient level, and we had 15 students who scored at the distinguished level. So percentages, we had 7% level one, 44% level two, 38% level three, and 11% level four. Our goal as a system is to have less than 10% of our students scoring at level one. So we met that goal with third grade math, and we did not meet that goal with third grade language arts. So Will tell you that one of the things we will focus on when we look at this, we did something really, really well in third grade. Obviously, we want to continue to the percentages and the numbers of students scoring at proficient and distinguished, but we met our goal with less than 10% scoring at the beginning level. We, we did not meet that goal in third grade ELA then obviously a focus for us in the 22-23 school year will be to look at those instructional strategies that we're using with our students in third parts and make sure that these same students who will be going on to fourth grade that we've identified whatever those gaps are to make sure we're closing those gaps as our students. For fourth grade, Let's pull up fourth grade here. We'll focus first on English language arts. And for English language arts, we had 12 students who scored at level one beginning, 32 students who scored at level two developing, 51 students who scored at level three proficient, and 27 students who scored at level four distinguished. So what does that look like percentage-wise? Percentage-wise, we had 10% score at the beginning level, 26% at developing, 42% at proficient, and 22% at distinct. That goal, congratulations, fourth grade in English language arts, because those 12%, those 12 students represent 10% of the overall population. And what we've asked our folks to do is to make sure that they are scoring at less than 10%, 10% or less of students at level one. And then for fourth grade math, fourth grade math um, did very well. We had seven students who scored at the beginning level, level one. We had 39 students at developing, 50 students at proficient and 28 students at distinguished. So overall percentages, that represents 6% scoring at level one, 31% at developing, 40% at proficient, and 23% at distinguished. Looking at fourth grade math, that if we could clone those results system-wide, we would love to do that. Because you see, fourth grade rocked it. They met the goal as far as 10% or less at level one, and they really pushed our students in fourth grade to make sure that they're scoring at proficient and distinguished while reducing the number of students scoring at developing level. So congratulations, fourth grade. Then we move to fifth grade. Fifth grade, you know, that's a transition year. So we have students moving from our elementary school to our middle school. And so this year in English language arts, we had 20 students in the fifth grade who scored at the beginning level in English language arts. We had 47 score at developing, 42 at proficient, and 21. It represents 15% scoring level one, 36% developing, 32% proficient and 16% distinguished. And for math in fifth grade, we had 13 students score at beginning, 42 at developing, 40 at proficient, 33 at distinguished. So fifth grade math, congratulations to you guys. You met our goal at 10% or less at beginning. 
31, 33% at developing, 31% at proficient, and 26% at this. We're incredibly proud of those results, and please keep that good work up. You'll see in fifth grade, we didn't meet our goal um, in ELA, and so obviously we'll continue to look at the strategies we're using in fifth grade language where we are able to close those gaps for our students scoring at the beginning level. Grade English language arts, we had 28 students scoring at beginning. We had 27 at developing, 58 at proficient, and 15 at distinguished. Percentage-wise, that represents 22% scored at beginning, 21% at developing, 45% at proficient, and 12% at distinguished. So we did not meet our goal in sixth grade ELA. And for sixth grade math, we had 30 students at beginning, 51 at developing, 31 at proficient, and 16 at distinguished. Then for, I'm sorry, for math, we had 23% at beginning, 40% developing, 24% proficient and 13% distinguished. And so obviously we did not meet our goal of 10 or less, 10% or less scoring at that beginning stage in ELA and math in sixth grade. And so we will continue to look at the gaps for our students who are in sixth grade moving on to seventh grade. And we'll continue to look at the interventions we're providing for sixth grade ELA and sixth grade math. Seventh grade, ELA, we had 19 students who scored at beginning, 54%, 54 students score at developing, 49% at proficient, and 12 at distinguished. That represents 14% of the population scoring at level one, 40% at level two, 37% at level three, and 9% at level two. And for math, for math in seventh grade, we had 12 students score at beginning level, 52 students at developing, 41 at proficient, 29 at. So percentage wise, that represents 9% at beginning, 39% at developing, 31% at proficient, and 22%. Seventh grade math did meet our goal of 10% or less scoring at beginning. In eighth grade ELA, we had 18 students scoring at the beginning level, 45 at developing, 46 at proficient, and 11 students scoring at that highest level distinct. Wise, that represents 15% scoring at the beginning level, 38% at developing, 38% at proficient, and 9% at For math in eighth grade, we had 21 scoring at the beginning level, 49 at developing, 39 at proficient, and 11 at distinguished. Percent at the beginning level, 41% developing, 33% at proficient, and 9% at distinguished. We move to the high school. The high school administers the end of course test. And so our U.S. history scores for high school, we had seven students score at beginning, 28 students score at developing, 32 at proficient, and three at distinguished. For percentages, that represents 10% scoring at beginning, 40% scoring at developing, 46 at proficient, and 4% at distinguished. For coordinate algebra, we had 15 students scoring at the beginning level, 38 at developing, 58 at proficient, and 12 at distinguished. Percentage wise, that represents 12% scoring at beginning, 31% at developing, 47% at proficient, and 10% at distinguished. For biology, we had six students score at the beginning level. 11 at developing, 20 at proficient, and 13 at distinguished. So that means 12% of our students scored at the beginning level, 
22% scored at the developing level, 40% at proficient, and 26% at distinguished. So for our end of course test, we had we we're really close at 12%, but the only end of course test that we met our goal of 10% or less was in. So obviously, we'll continue to try to strive toward boosting the percentage of students who are scoring at distinguished and proficient, reduce the number of students who are scoring at beginning and across the board. So that's our summative data from 21-22. And so then we will move on to our system strategic plan. Our system strategic plan, what we do to write our plan is we look at all of our survey data that we've received throughout the year. And we also look at our test data that we have received. And so from that, we look at the strategies and the action steps that we need to take what we're doing. So our system strategic plan for 2022-2023, goal number one is that all students will master content at the developing, proficient, and distinguished levels. We'll have no more than 10% of our students scoring at the beginning level on any end of grade assessment or on any end of course assessment. So our action steps that we're going to be doing during 22-23, we will continue to use the iReady Reading System 44, iReady Math in grades K through 8 and the Math Assessment in grades 9 through 12. And we will use these assessments and we will use the aligned individualized plan to provide personalized and equitable learning for all students. And we will continue to assess our students three times each year using these measures. So we will do the assessments in August and September, November and December, and February and March. The second action step for this goal is to provide ongoing professional learning using Marzano's New Art and Science of Teaching, which is broken into three areas of feedback, content, and context. We will also have an additional focus on common grading practices and rigor in the classrooms. It's 21st century skills and explore STEM implementation. The recommendation to focus on our grading practices and rigor and STEM implementation was a recommendation that was made back this year. And so we will do our best to make sure we. Our third action step is to schedule additional learning time for all students in need of remediation. And we'll do that through after school tutoring, summer school, our ROAR period, and also we'll use our contracted teachers in our two Title I schools, Commerce Primary and Commerce Elementary. Fourth action step, we'll continue a professional learning focus on the results from our Georgia School Assessment on Performance Standards. It's important to G GSAPs, and we had one of those visits um, just prior to COVID, and so we are still implementing the recommendations that were made by that review team. The fifth action step is to work with our grade levels and our vertical content teams to continue revision of our curriculum units and our lesson plans aligned to Marzano's instructional framework. We'll also highlight the use of our digital resources to post on our revised website and to increase students' awareness of and appreciation for other cultures. And that particular item came through on our Cognia survey, so we'll do um, a better job of focusing on all of the cultures that are represented within our school system. The sixth action step is to continue our monthly school visits for classroom observations to measure our level of student engagement that develops creative, innovative, and problem solving. Continue our analysis of our benchmark data using our subgroup information and our interviews with our student advisory groups and evaluation of academic programs and services. 
So monthly, our system leaders go into the schools and we do classroom observations, we look at student data, and we also interview our student advisory so that we have a good pulse on what's going on in the schools. And then the last action step for this particular goal is to continue our quarterly meetings with iReady data teams to evaluate our iReady data. Second goal for 22-23 is 100% of our teachers, peer professionals, and administrators will participate in at least one job embedded professional learning opportunity focused on meeting student academic needs and or wraparound services for students and our or teachers. So our action steps for this particular goal, we will plan and provide professional learning of effective integration of technology into teaching and learning. And we will go beyond Google Classroom because this particular action step was was our lowest ranked area on our TEAK self-assessment. We will also measure using Elliot, the Elliot tool, when we do our monthly classroom visits. Data from the FY22 Technology Needs Survey will guide the professional learning we provide in this area. Second action step, we will implement formalized grading and assessment practices that represent attainment of content knowledge and skills across all classrooms and programs. And we're working on that by using our proficiency scales so that we can make sure that our grades are a true reflection of mastery. Of Action step number three, explore opportunities for structured and ongoing collaborative learning communities to improve learner performance and organizational effectiveness. Action step number four, we will plan and provide professional learning on volunteer training to families and our parent family engagement. In that will be a focus for us during 20. And goal number three for us will be 100% of teaching positions will be filled with fully certified and highly effective teachers to maximize student learning. There'll be two action steps with that particular goal. The first one, we will create a formalized process for staff recruitment and retention to include intentional efforts to ensure diversity that is more reflective of our student population. And we will also formalize the mentoring, induction, induction and coaching activities of all of our new employees. The last part of our action plan to do with our system's top 15 recommendations from the Georgia School Boards Association Vision Project. So you can take a look at those because those are posted at the end of our system. So that is all that we had planned for this morning, this overview of our federal programs. We also did an overview of our summative data and we did an overview of our system strategic plan. And so what we're going to do is we're going to post this particular Zoom session on our website, and we're also going to give our stakeholders an opportunity to give feedback. And that's a chance for you to share with, with us what you would like to see during the school year, because for us to close those learning gaps, it has to be a, a effort between home and school. And so we're going to need parents and guardians on board with helping us to close those learning gaps of our students. So please do not hesitate to contact us throughout the year. If you would like to participate in the session, I'm going to do another one of these sessions at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Thanks so much for your continued support of our school system.